bizarre training. What in the world are we teaching people about deception in interview and interrogation in our training programs? Bizarre training programs. What are some of the things that are being taught uh, to investigators about interview and interrogation? Some of the most bizarre training I've ever seen. Hi, Stan Walters is back with you again on the Lie Guy channel. I just want to share with you, I haven't been tracking this course for some time. Now, I've, I've been in the business of doing research and study on, of interview and interrogation for 32 years now. Uh, I've done work in prisons, I've done thousands of interviews, trained agencies all over, the, all over the world, and I see some unusual interview and interrogation training. I see some things that philosophically that I don't agree with. It uh, doesn't make it necessarily wrong, I just a different approach. But I tell you what folks, this has got to take the cake. I have never seen more bizarre, weird information taught in, than I have in this course. Now, the one I'm, I've been tracking for some time, First time I found this, it was being taught to a very large metropolitan city. Now, this is what's frightening. Huge Metropolitan Police Department. They had to take this course. They uh, had a 40-hour course, had to pass a written exam to maintain certification for post, police officer standard and training. Now, and I want you to listen to some of this. This is the most off-the-wall, wacky things I have ever seen in my life. Now, now just I've got the PowerPoint slides and the handouts for this. This is utterly amazing. This, this borders on absolute, complete irresponsibility. This, this is amazing stuff. Now, now, some of the things are taught here. Uh, you know the little lines you live right here? Things called the, the philtrum. In this course, students, investigators are taught, if those are too far apart, point apart here, that's a sign you're a child molester. Really, that's supposed to be a sign you're a child molester. If a woman takes lipstick and puts it off her lips, on her skin, that's supposed to be a sign she's sexually promiscuous. This, this is not my teaching. This is some of the bizarre things in this course that I have found being taught around the country uh, to law enforcement and to investigators, even insurance companies, school resource officers. This, this is off the charts here. Um, here's just some of the stuff I want to share with you about this bizarre course. If you have shifty eyes, if you've got shifty eyes, you're going to lie, but you don't know about what yet. So shifty-eyed people are liars. It's unbelievable. If you're sweating, you're lying. Well, if that's the case, then a whole lot of grooms in, in the summertime are lying when they take their wedding vows at the altar. If it's a sweating's a sign of lying. Um, if you have more white in your eye below your right eye than in your left, that's a sign you're lying. If you have bulging eyes, that means you're a big talker. Now, the whole principle of this course, it's referred to as a look system. In other words, you gauge the person's credibility and about them about how they actually look, how they appear. Is this scary or what? Okay. Um, if you have more uh, white in your left eye down here, show more white you know, in this eye than your right eye, that means you're an emotional person. If you've got more white in your right eye, that means you're an analytical person. I, I, I don't ask me where this has come from because I sure can't find any research on it. Like I said, I told you at the beginning, this is bizarre stuff. This is not the land of wackadoodles, okay? If you have a wrinkle in your mind's eye, anybody know where the hell the mind's eye is? Supposedly, the mind's eye is right here. So if you have a wrinkle right here, uh, where your eyebrows are, that means you're lying. Uh, amazing. Oh, here you go. If you have misshapen eyelashes or missing eyelashes, that's a sign you're psychotic. So that's what Maybelline's all about. Again, you understand I'm being facetious here because this is just so strange. If you show your hands late after answering a question, that means you're lying. Did you do it? No. That supposedly means I'm lying because my hands are late in showing. Okay? If I change hands, for example, right now I'm gesturing with the right hand. If I switch to my left, that's supposed to be a sign I'm being deceptive. If, if you can find this, please send it to me. If you can find the research, I'd, I'd love to see this because I can't find it anywhere. Uh, oh, but if your hands are over your head like this, okay, that means you can't lie. Really? So we maybe chain them to the wall with their hands up. Again, this is, this is taught to law enforcement and to fire service and school resource. And I found it taught to insurance companies who are investigating fraud. 
Can you see the liability here? Oh, oh, if you have lines on your face, okay, right here, on your forehead, that's a, more than three. That's a sign you're clinically depressed and at risk at committing suicide. Wow, okay, there's a new one, okay. Oh, if you have bumps on your chin, that means you're a strong-willed person, whatever that's supposed to mean. If you've got a flat line down the top of your nose, whatever, that, that means that you're also a strong-willed person. Oh, here's a good one. If you have, you have been sexually molested as a child, you will have lines at a 45-degree angle down the corners of your mouth. That, that means that you've been a victim of child molestation. Just that's how we tell we look at the person's face. This, again, it's called how you look at the person. Can, can you see where there's going to be problems here with, with uh, sexism and racism and uh, homophobia and this kind of stuff? I mean, my Lord. Oh, if you have a gap between your teeth, okay, um, you're a strong-willed a strong and very opinionated person, okay? If your upper and lower teeth are bad, okay, upper and lower teeth are bad, then you had childhood shyness. If you have large upper front teeth, if your front teeth appear big, you're a talkative person. If you have bad teeth, you're a psychotic. So what the heck does that do with all the people using crack and all this kind of stuff or, or have poor dental care in other parts of the country? Do you immediately assume that somebody's psychotic by, by bad teeth? Do we institutionalize them? Oh, if you're yawning, that's a sign you're deceptive, really. And if you hide your right hand when you're talking, okay? If you hide your right hand when you're talking, that means you're deceptive. So what about left-handed, right-handed people? I just wanted to share this with you. This, this is the kind of stuff that drives me crazy when I get into the classroom and in trying to undo the damage that silly, off-the-wall, crazy stuff like this does. And we wonder why we're having lawsuits, we wonder why we're being sued, wonder why we're having problems in court in, 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 in our cases. Can you imagine the liability this creates for a police department, for a fire department, for a corporation who's using this type of stuff? And, you know... How in the world could you even hire somebody to come in and teach this type of stuff? This stuff goes back to eugenics and goes all the way back to Cesar Lombroso in the 19th century, who said you could figure out what type of criminal someone was by their appearance. Remember that? Some of you have had sociology and psychology. Remember Cesar Lombroso? He's a physician, and he measured the faces and the bodies of inmates in prison in England. And his, his theory was is that you could tell what type of criminal a person was because they were devolving and it was in their appearance. So if they had too heavy a brow, that was a sign they were going to type of criminal. If their nose was too wide, or if their lips were too thick, fingers too long, had a big jaw, short jaw, long neck, short neck, no jaw, big ears, little ears, short ears, eyes too close together, eyes too far apart. And he used that concept to label people as devolving into animals. And that's how we could tell that they were criminal. Now think of some of those characteristics. Think of, think of aren't there, there are countries and people annihilating each other today because of this type of thing? This is, this, I know I'm agitated. This drives me nuts. This is being taught. This drivel in 21st century law enforcement academies to today's new police officers and recruits. Principles based on appearance. Uh, again, like I said, this absolutely borderlines to me on, on reckless indifference. It's, it's negligent. And why in the world anybody would have this type of training for their personnel is beyond me. Stand by for the lawsuits. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox. Just take a look at who's teaching your material. Ask for background. Ask for the bibliography. Look for the empirical evidence and see if there's any type of valid stuff in here. Just don't pick somebody because the price or something. Look at what's being taught and be critical. Well, enough for me on my platform. Listen, if you've got some more of these odd things that you've seen, hey, send them to me. I'd love to talk about them. Uh, love to find out about them. Uh, if you've got questions about some of this stuff or whatever, uh, drop me a note at stanatthelieguide.com. Uh, in the meantime, well, right below here should be right about in here. Subscribe to the rest of the channel. And when I discover new things like this, I'm going to have to share it with you. We, we've got to, to take a look at this kind of stuff. So hit that subscribe channel here on the YouTube. It'll let you know when I've got more videos and work coming up. I've got some more pieces of research and things I'd like to share with you. Connect with me on my LiGuy blog, the LiGuy blog, uh, and theLiGuy.com to find out about upcoming courses or training and, and how you may be able to host a, at least some semblance of a scientific and parallel evidence course. My whole purpose is to work with and speak to agencies and organizations who need to train their people 
how to to uh, do effective interviews, uh, accurately spot a lie, uncover the real story, and make better decisions. And this is a place we hope to do that. Good to see you again. Uh, come back and check in with me. See you next time on Stan at the, uh, Stan Walters at the Lie Guy Channel.